Hi, good morning. It's nice to be with you again and happy new year to everyone. Today we're talking about divorce and adultery, quoting from Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 to 32. Jesus says in 31, it has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. Uh, Jesus is quoting uh, from Deuteronomy chapter 21. Uh, Moses wrote this to protect women. Um, women in those days, they didn't have uh, laws to protect them. And Moses wrote this and said that if you want to um, divorce your wife, then you must give her a certificate of divorce. Now, a certificate of divorce, when a man gave a certificate of divorce or a woman had a certificate of divorce, that protected them in the sense that they could remarry and they weren't looked upon as a harlot or a prostitute or uh, someone who was immoral. And so it protected them that way. But over the centuries, men, the religious leaders, the society, they began to take that and twist the truth, twist the original meaning, and it became a religious abuse and social abuse as well, where they would, um, they would permit men to divorce their wives at a whim say even if they if they uh, burnt their dinner then they would allow the divorce to take place and so they really abused this this law and what jesus was saying and bringing this up is that he wanted to reestablish the marriage covenant to his intended place as god has ordained and uh, he wanted to set the bar, the standard of marriage, uh, once again, at its highest level. Um, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, it says, That is why Jesus, uh, well, the word of God says, That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Now, in Matthew 19, verse, verses 4 through 6, uh, basically, uh, Jesus says the same thing, that they become one flesh, the two becomes one. And then in verse 6, it says, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. So when a man and a woman becomes one in covenantal um, marriage before God, he says, no one should separate that, not even a man. Right, that they should not be divorced. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 32, Jesus says, But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality makes her a victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So divorce here, he's talking about, when he talks about divorce, he says it's permitted in the case of immorality, sexual immorality. However, even in that case, uh, divorce is not the first option. It's permitted, but it's not the first option. Uh, divorce, we need to understand what Jesus, uh, Jesus says here, divorce causes others to sin. In other words, divorce is, has a devastating impact on a family. Um, and it, devastating impact, it, it has, it gives, offers nothing good for the family. Um, it tears families apart and it destroys household. It destroys the children um, and wife and the husband as well. But divorce as a Christian must not be an option. And we can see uh, by today's day and age, there's so much divorce going on. And because of that, uh, we have so many problems. There's violence on the streets. There's uh, the prisons are full of people uh, that grew up under divorce and their lives are wrecked and uh, has made terrible because of divorce. So divorce has devastating consequences. And what Christians we should do is not opt out for divorce. That should be that should not be an option for us. And uh, that it should be the very, very last option. Um, but rather, we as Christians, we our goal is 
for forgiveness. Our goal is for faithfulness, to reconcile, to, to love in the name of Christ, no matter what wrong was caused, um, our first option to, is to forgive, to be faithful, to reconcile, and to love. And, uh, it's, and, and a marriage can only stay together and be vibrant and lasting uh, through Jesus Christ. A relationship through Jesus Christ is the only glue, the bond that can keep a marriage together. And so we as Christians, we must, uh, in order for our marriage to be vibrant, happy, joyful, and full of love and lasting, we as Christians, we must commit ourselves to becoming more and more intimate with Jesus Christ, our lives more and more deeper and growing in Jesus Christ so that it can positively impact our marriage. And when our marriage is impacted positively because of Christ, then our children will be positively impacted as well. And so I want to bless your marriage. I want to bless your family. I want to pray for the best and richest of love and grace to you and your family and to your, you and your husband or your wife. And may his love overflow to you and in you and through you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful and blessed day. God bless.